truss that is made with timber is called carcass. A roof truss can either be made with timber or steel. The components of roof include the wall plate, tie beam, post, struts, rafter, pole line, noggin, anger, roof overhang, ridge board, facial, roofing sheet, roof gutter, and eave angle. This member is called the wall plate. The wall plate is usually sitting directly on the roof beam. If there's no roof beam here, it can be sitting on the wall. The wall that is rising to up to this point, so the wall plate will be sitting directly on it. And you can see this steel strap. This steel strap is coming direct, is coming from the roof beam, and then you can use it to tie down the wall plate to the roof beam so that this tie beam, so that this um, wall plate will not slip off the, the roof beam. The tie beam is being connected straight to the wall plate. You can see the tie beam is sitting on the wall plate. So you nail the tie beam to the wall plate. You can see something from here. This is one wood, this is another wood, the timber. So the distance from here to here is called lapping length. So this tie beam is being lapped at this length. This vertical member as you are seeing is called the post. The first one there is the king post and the next to it, which is this, this is the queen post and the rest are the princess post. So the first one which is the tallest, that is the king post, the second that is the queen post and the rest are the princess post. So between the post, you can see this and this, there's one cross brace in there. This is called the struts. You can find it everywhere. It is a diagonal member. You can see this post and this post are being connected by one member, which is this. So this is called the struts. This upper member is called rafter. You can see this is the Rafter. The rafter is the member that will determine the slope of the of the roof. So you can see it is diagonal. So this is the rafter. At this point, you can see there is a lapping here too. So between here and here, two members, um, two timbers are being lapped. So this is the lapping of of the rafter. Okay, the spacing of this tie beam. Whenever you are spacing, spacing means center to center. That is what spacing is. Or unless if it is otherwise stated that out to out or in to in but whenever you're just here spacing spacing generally means center to center so the spacing of this tie beam is 1200 millimeters <coughs> and the funniest thing is whenever you have a spacing between the tie beam that spacing is going to be the same thing with the spacing of the of the post and then and the rafters that is between this rafter and this rafter, you are going to have the same spacing. So this is the pole line. This pole line is the member that will bind all the rafters together. You can see this rafter and this rafter is being connected by what? By this pole line. This rafter and this rafter is being connected by what? another pole line. So it will be connecting all the rafters together. So that is the pole line. And the spacing of this particular one is 900 millimeters. If a pole line is nailed on the roofing sheet, it is not a pole line but a button. Next is the noggin. You can see this rectangular um, area. This is the noggin. This noggin is specifically for the for the ceiling. So this is the noggin. The 
this mugging is being connected to this roof truss by a member which is called anger you can see this member that is the anger the anger is being nailed to this tie beam and it is also nailed to the noggin so this anger is connecting the um the noggin to the tie beam i know the tie beam is connected to other roof member so meaning you are connecting the noggin to the to the roof truss to the roof carcass and then there is another brazing here this brazing is basically connecting this tie beam and the other tie beam just to connect the um the the noggin to the ceiling you can see once you connect this noggin to to this truss but there is no tie beam or something here so you just provide a brazing which is this so this brazing we connect this tie beam to that tie beam then you can now provide an anger to connect the noggin this is the part of the roof that extends beyond the perimeter of the building and the extension is usually 600 millimeters. The purpose of roof overhang is to give protection to the building against heavy rain so that water do not run over the edges of the building. This is the member at the peak of the roof truss when two opposing roof planes meet. A cap is used to cover this portion of the roof and that is called the ridge cap. This is a long area of the roof where the roof meets the outer wall. It is seen throughout the perimeter of the roof. The wooden material used to cover this area is called fascia board. The fascia of a roof can also be made with concrete. Roofing sheet is the material that is used to cover the roof truss to prevent the building from rain and other weather conditions. Roofing sheet can be made with aluminium, steel and it can be stone coated as well. Roof gutter is a water channel system that is provided on the roof to drain water from the roof directly to the ground. It is a closed channel that can be made with steel, copper, aluminium or plastic. If angle is an angular roof sheet used to cover the portion where the roofing sheet and the fascia board meet to produce a finished job. Okay, this is an if angle. You can see it has three surfaces. This is the shorter surface. This is another surface at the back which is not that long. The longest surface here.